That's not good. Okay, sure. open. Open! Piece of... Okay, there we go. Um, uh, fire. Uh, fire bad. Fire very bad. Uh, extinguisher. Douse the flames. Out, 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 out. Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay, that's better. Alright. Come on, get working. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered an optimal outcome. This PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive to keep you alive on an alien world. Please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. Oh, what a, what a, what a wonderful bit of information to start with. You're, you're marooned. Good luck. All right. What have we got going out here? What's the damage? Oh, that's not good. That's gonna be one big repair bill. The Aurora suffered orbital hull failure. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. Oh, that's nice. Was I just told that I'm the sole survivor? Jeez. All right. Well, welcome to Subnautica, everyone. It's been a long time since I've uh, since I've played this game. If you've been following me for a long time, this was a game that I was playing back whenever it was in pre-release, whenever it was in the uh, alpha, and they were still putting the story in piece by piece. I got pretty far in the game, and then I ran up against the wall of like they weren't done developing it. Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. Unlikely, but plausible. Your survival rate. Uh, the AI is not particularly... Well, it's not... It's no moral support. Pure... Purely data-driven. So, in this first episode of Subnautica here, um, I'm going to basically... Be, like, most of this is going to be not very cut or, uh, well, not very cut down, if you will. What you're gonna see is mostly me searching around consistently for lots of materials. M namely, at the start here, I'm on the lookout for copper, because that's, uh, something that you cannot find easily. There's, um, there, there are bits of the ship sitting around out in the ocean here that I can process into titanium, which is the primary building material in the game. But really, my biggest concern is having enough, um, Copper in order to make some of the tech devices. Ah, here. See? Metal salvage. Oh, we. Uh, I've always wanted to come back and finish this game after basically having to put it down and say, okay, maybe once it's fully developed, I'll be able to come back to it. Um, because this, this game is a marvel. It is an in incredible and exceptional, um, experience. It is a beautiful sight to behold. All right, so I found this large uh, coral tube that goes underneath. This is good as well. Uh, something else that I'm going to need is copper to construct at least a few different things. Lots of materials on the walls in here, so very valuable. But, as I was saying, Subnautica is, a, is, is an incredible, beautiful game, an amazing adventure. I think it's a better example of like how a lot of crafting survival games should be done um, in regards to having a story. The story within itself is compelling. Um, you do, like, if you've never seen this game before, um, if you've never played this game before... Oh, jeez. I'm just running out of air there. If you've never seen or played this game before, I mean, the, 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 the hook is pretty simple. You have crash-landed on a planet, you are the sole survivor, and you have to figure out how to get off of this rock. And there's a, there's a greater mystery that makes that more complicated 
than you may imagine. And, you know, you'll you'll see that as I continue to play through the uh, the entirety of this game. Like, we, we will get through the entire story. We probably won't get every last little bit and piece because there's a lot of data logs and whatnot in this game. I'm going to try to get the bulk of them. I'm not going to focus on getting every last little one, and I'm, I'm not going to exhaustively explore the world, okay? So, um... Can I pick up a little bit more? Yes, I can. Okay, so I think I have enough materials in my inventory between copper and titanium in order to properly get some of the most basic materials together. Um, well, some of the most basic equipment together. So uh, let's go ahead and pop back up into the light pod here. And let's start off by getting myself a battery that's made by combining two acid mushrooms and some copper. Blueprint acquired. And then we can go ahead and create some titanium from the salvage. We can also process two quartz to make uh, some glass. I had six quartz, so we can go ahead and make three of those. Now let's come into personal. Let's make a scanner out of that battery and titanium. You need the scanner. It's probably the most important tool in the game. The scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data. Alright, still plenty of stuff in my inventory here. Uh, I need to stash a whole bunch of it. Um, also got the glass. Alright, so, next up, let's go ahead and do personal. Um, I need a, an O2 tank, and I have the salvage to do that. I just have to process the salvage into titanium. Um, it's actually a, a really fantastic way to get your hands on all of the titanium necessary for, like, base building, is to just look for the uh, scraps sitting around. So... But, let's go ahead and make that O2 tank. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and... Near blueprint acquired. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and just stash as much as we can. I'm gonna need to grab a little bit of... Oh, right. I hadn't, uh, I hadn't opened the hatch. Every single time you go through... Well, when you go through one of the hatches for the first time, you always get that fancy animation. Um, let's go ahead and grab a couple of acid mushrooms. I'm gonna just scan a couple of these things down here because it's kind of annoying that I ha I don't have them scanned. There are there are data entries for so many things in this game. Basically, almost everything in the game can be scanned, and there is a data entry of some type in your PDA that you can read. I'm not really I'm not going to read those PDA entries for the most part, not unless they're critical to the story or the world building or something. Um, the data entries for just... Yeah, I think I, I just need that class. The data entries for um, the silver ore. Let's make that battery. Oh man, I'm pulled in so many directions at once. The data entries for like the flora and the fauna on the planet aren't really as valuable as the story entries. All right, there we go. So I've got myself a flashlight. Now, I need to make myself a repair tool. The repair tool is, um... This is probably the biggest place where the game stumbles in regards to helping you figure things out. Figure, uh, finding the cave sulfur, because there's two... I think there are two different types of sulfur in the game. Cave sulfur is harder to find than anything else in the early game. Ooh. And it involves... A, uh, <laughs> I knew that that was gonna happen, but I, I, I hate it every single time. So, you have to tempt a, um... You have to tempt this fish out of the flower. It blows up, you get the cave sulfur out of the flower. Um, and that's how you get your cave sulfur. And scan this metal, metal salvage, we'll also scan the... Come on. Come on. Oh my god. 30 seconds. Scan that flower. Okay, so. Um... Now that I've got that, let's head back to the pod. Um, the whole point is that you need the cave sulfur to create a, um, a repair tool. And, and cave sulfur has other uses, not a significant number of uses, but some, a, a few limited other uses. The main purpose, oh, silicon rubber, that's what I'm missing. Okay, we're gonna need to head over to the kelp forest a little bit here. Um, so... I, I know that that's probably a highly searched term. It's like, where the, where on earth do I find cave sulfur? Because the game does not do a particularly good job of teaching you where to find the stuff. Um, hopefully, if you're playing through the game or you want to play through the game, you've learned a really valuable lesson here. 
All right, let's go ahead and grab a little bit of salt. Eat something. Eat some. Don't tell me what to do, game. I'll eat whenever I'm ready to eat. Okay, so I've got the scanner tool. Let's go ahead and uh, scan these creep vine. These, uh, these seeds are the way that you get your hands on silicon rubber, as well as how you get your hands on uh, lubricant. 30 seconds. Okay, there's some uh, some sandstone. So, thus far in the game, I have been collecting up... Well, I've been breaking open limestone. Limestone will give you um, either copper or titanium, I think. I think that it's just those two. It's been a while since I've looked like at the data sheet on what does what in this game. Um, but sandstone, which is uh, a little bit more rare. Not super rare, but just a... Ooh! Jeez, stupid freaking stalkers. Um, sandstone, which is a bit more rare, it will drop either gold, um, lead, uh, there's a little bit of gold, and, most importantly, silver. Silver is uh, something that I'm going to need to create um, wiring kits, which are really necessary, and they're used to make... Um, Silver-based wiring kits are an essential component of many habitat modules. Ah, well, there you go. Uh, educating me right there. Um... That little bit of silver is is enough. I think I think that that's good enough. Let's 30 seconds. head back to the life pod. But silver is necessary for making an upgraded O2 tank. You know, so I've got the basic one on my back right now, and I can upgrade it uh, at least one more time before finding a more sophisticated version later in the game. So we'll just go ahead and swim back here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna like. I could just, you know, skim the top of the water to get back to the, uh, the life pod, but I kind of like the idea of continuing to search for additional outcroppings of sandstone, which, again, I don't think I'm going to find. Sandstone almost never, uh, spawns here in the shallows, and you have to go into the kelp forest to find it, so... It's... I mean, it is what it is. It's not necessarily the best. So, like I said, most of this episode... Increased local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during Planet 4. Oh! Oh, that's lovely. This ship is leaking radiation where I am. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so, um, let's go to equipment here. I need two glass, and I need the O2 tank off of my back. I already got two glass from earlier. And let's go ahead and unequip that O2 tank. Personal uh, equipment, high capacity O2 tank. So this is probably going to slow me down because it's bigger and it's heavier, but it's definitely going to give me more air. So I need silicon rubber to make fins. That'll speed me up underwater. I need silicon rubber for a knife as well. So let's make silicon rubber. And you get two from one creep seed. So that should give me four. Let's make a little bit of lubricant with the third one. Lubricant is essential in construction of vehicles and power plants. All right, now there's the fins. The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. For your safety, this setting cannot be overridden. Okay, so silicon rubber, cave sulfur, and titanium. I have myself a repair tool now. Fantastic. And let's finally make that knife. Because I might want to defend myself a little bit. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. The knife remains the only exception. Okay, so let's go ahead and patch up the repair, uh, the life pod. This is an important step. It's kind of important to get this all fixed. Life pod secondary systems online. Running full environment diagnostic and outputting results to data bank. All right, cool. Um, Oh, almost forgot. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, there we go. Uh, get a little bit of a food in me here. Uh, let's go ahead and stash Vital some of these... Stabilizing. Yes, thank you, AI. Um, stash some stuff there. And let's use this repair tool to fix up the radio. The radio is really the more important component to repair inside of the life pod. There right, we go. Okay, let's activate this thing. This is Aurora. Distress signal received. Rescue operation will be dispatched to your location in nine, 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 nine hours.
Continue to monitor for emergency transmissions from other life pods. Oh yes, that 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 is encouraging. Nine, 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 nine hours. Yes, that that if if there wasn't a more clear indication that it's very unlikely anybody will come to help me, I don't know what is. All right, now that I've got the scanner tool and I've got a bunch of the other stuff sorted out, I need to start scanning fragments. And luckily, we've got two Sea Glide fragments right here. All right. New blueprint acquired. Let's check what it takes to make a Sea Glide. This will speed up my uh, transit. Battery, copper, wire, and titanium. You know what? I think I've already got everything to make that stuff. Let's go ahead and just grab two copper mushrooms and we'll hop back inside of the... Oh, you know what? This giant coral tube. Um, let's go ahead and grab two samples off of this thing. The giant coral tube can be... Uh, samples from it can be combined with salt to create bleach. And then the bleach can be used to make two waters, which are pretty hydrating. It's a, it's a good uh, combination for you to use in the early game. So, let's uh, go ahead and grab the copper. Probably missing some stuff here, but I know that I need a battery. And I'm gonna need copper wire. Uh, I'm gonna need that lubricant. And probably some titanium. I don't know. Actually, let's, <laughs> let's grab the salt as well, because I need to use this to make myself some water. So, uh, resources basic, we're gonna make that bleach out of the salt and the coral tube sample. Bleach is an essential chemical used for cleaning wounds and purifying water. Okay, um, and deployable. Sea Glide, battery, lubricant, copper, and titanium. The Sea Glide will increase your effective exploration range. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and eventual death. Just rearrange my hot bar here. Okay, that's good enough for the way that I want this. Hop back into the drink, and now that I've got the sea glide, I can look around for some additional um, debris fields where... Uh, some materials are. Probably over this way where this, you know, um, coral tube breaches the uh, surface twice. It's usually somewhere around here. I always get turned around in this game. Games without maps tend to confuse me greatly, which is, in my opinion, it's a ringing endorsement of this game, the fact that I love it so much, and I've come back and I've played through this game. I think I've played through this game start to finish three different times, and that's not including all the hours that I've spent on this without playing through the game start to finish. Not to mention the fact that I made guides for it. All right, so I got a fragment of a grav trap. Ooh, hey, we've got a fragment for a beacon over here. So the grav trap is basically a, um, a way to make fishing easier. Aha, okay, so this will unlock the grav for me. Blueprint acquired. Let's look around. So th this 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 type of debris field is what I'm looking for because they're not big debris fields in the safe shallows. This should. New blueprint acquired. All right, cool. And uh, so I've got the beacon unlocked. And uh, if if I scan something that I already have all the fragments for, I just get extra titanium, which is really good whenever you go further out. New blueprint acquired. Um, like I was saying, one of the best ways to get your hands on lots of um, titanium in the early game is basically to uh, pick up lots of salvage, because there's all of this scrap metal from the ship lying around. But that's not really available the further out you go. Um, usually, I tend to build two bases in this game. I try to avoid going to a third base, but um, I will build a, pr uh, like a preliminary base here, in the shallows, and then I will proceed to build, like, a, an actual proper base. Oh, I almost forgot. Go ahead and grab some air here. I need to grab myself some, uh, some kelp samples. But I tend to make a base in the shallows here, and then make, like, my real base later on in a more opportune location. Alright, let's head back to, uh, let's head back to the life pod now that I've got the, uh, plants. Okay, so, we'll turn those creep samples into fiber mesh. That's perfect. Then we will come in here. Uh, you know what? There's actually nothing to use the fiber mesh for right now. I basically grabbed it uh, in order to bank it. 
uh, to have it for later whenever I need it. I don't want to have to run out and grab it. So let's make a graph trap. That's battery, copper ore, titanium, copper ore, and titanium for a beacon. So I have enough copper here to get this done. I just have to grab two more two more acid mushrooms. It kind of makes sense to make like five batteries right off the bat whenever you start this game because you're going to be you're going to need so many of them. Um, okay, so electronics, we're going to go ahead and make that battery. And now we can make ourselves the grav trap. Just enough copper to make all of this stuff. I got really lucky on the copper front. Sometimes you just can't get enough of it. And we got the beacon. All right, cool. There we go. Now, let's listen to this radio. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't want us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing is trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Okay. Well, uh, the poor cook. He, um, he's definitely in a not-so-great situation. Yeah, that disinfected water gives me 10 more hydration than the, the stuff that came with the pod. Okay, so, um, now that that's done, what I want to do is I want to set up the zero point. So, looking uh, away from the aurora, you want to find this one particular coral tube where there's one end of it breaching the surface. I cover this in the guide where I do this stuff, but from there you want to go over this little hunk of coral tube and to this vaguely sh Y pattern shaped spot on, uh, of grass. You want to go into the middle of it, and right in the middle of this Y shape is the world zero point. And you come up to the side of it, and I'm going to name this zero, all caps, and then I'm going to come into the third tab of my PDA, and I'm going to change the zero beacon to a different color, I'll make it yellow, just to differentiate it from everything. And this is probably where I'm going to set up my preliminary base, my super basic base in the shallows. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drop the graph trap here as well. And this is basically the end of it. At the end of my, my initial, like, I've basically done the basics. Yeah, that's everything. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I will see all of you in the next episode where we get a base up.